Well, now we need to talk about the concept of the solubility of a salt. The solubility of a salt. The solubility of the salt tells you how much of the salt you can dissolve. The solubility is how much, maybe I should call that the maximum amount of salt you can dissolve. The solubility of the salt is the maximum amount of salt, maximum amount of the salt you can dissolve. So if something has a high solubility, you can dissolve a lot of it. And if it has a low solubility, you can't dissolve very much of it. Um, another way to put this is the solubility of the salt is how much you would have to add to saturate the solution. If you add an amount that's exactly equal to the solubility, then you know you can't add any more. Mm -hmm. right? so, the amount, so if you add something that's equal to the solubility, then you must have saturated the solution. You can't add any more because that's the maximum. Mm -hmm. But that's useful, so let's write that down. So the solubility of the salt is also, it's how much of the salt you have to add to saturate the solution. The solubility of the salt is how much of the salt you have to add to saturate the solution. Those are really equivalent definitions. So, um, let's see here. So, um, let's say that we add less an amount of salt that is less. the salt's solubility. Let's say we add an amount of salt that is less than the salt's solubility. Um, what's going to happen to that? Is it going to completely dissolve or partially dissolve or not dissolve at all? Um, completely dissolve? Yeah, it would completely dissolve. Yes, it's not like when it gets saturation, it means that we cannot dissolve right. anymore. So. But we haven't gotten to saturation yet. Yeah, but because this is like less amount of salt, so right. it's going to be to completion. So now, after it dissolves, at this point, would you say that the solution is saturated or unsaturated? Unsaturated. It's still unsaturated, because we haven't added enough. So the solution would be unsaturated even after this portion dissolves. Mm -hmm. And would there be, after, this is, after the reaction is finished, would there be any precipitate? Because oh, no. it's going to completely dissolve. Ah, and one more thing, what would be the relationship here between Q and the KSP? Okay, Q is actually actual. So Q is going to be less than KSP, is it? Okay. That's good. That's a good answer. Remember from when we talked about equilibrium, K tells you how far forward the equilibrium is, but Q tells you how far forward you've actually gone. Um, well, uh, in this case, remember that equilibrium means saturation. So K tells us how far forward saturation is, it's like a and Q tells us how close we've gone to saturation. Sorry? Didn't you mention, say, in your videos that it's a destination right. and uh, where we are? Right exactly. Now. Although, that's probably maybe not a good, uh, uh, that doesn't 100% apply to solutions. So yeah. it's good that you remember that, but maybe we, we shouldn't have mentioned that here, because you don't have to get to saturation for a solution. We could just stop right here. So maybe we shouldn't think of this as the destination anymore. Okay. So, um, so usually, usually Q tells you where you're at and K tells you where you're going. Usually Q tells you where you're at and K tells you where you're going, but we need a different slogan here. Here our slogan should be Q tells us where we're at and the KSP tells us the furthest we can go. Okay. A good definition now would be for, for solutions, we should say that Q tells us where we're at and KSP tells us the furthest we can go. Q tells us how much we've dissolved, and the KSP tells us the most that we can mm -hmm. dissolve, roughly speaking. 
Okay. Roughly speaking, Q tells us how much we've dissolved, and the KSP tells us the most that we can resolve. Well, so far, we haven't dissolved as much as we could. Remember that the, the Q is based on the ions. So the more you dissolved, the bigger the Q would be. Okay. Right? The more ions there are, the bigger uh, Q would be. All right, so this is a good row for our table. Well, now let's do a different row. Now let's add an amount of a salt that is equal to the salt's solubility. So this is starting from zero. So now we've added an amount of salt that is equal to the salt's solubility. Starting, so let's say we got a fresh, a fresh solution, and we're starting from scratch, and we add an amount of salt that's equal to the salt solubility. And then we want to try to fill in the other rows of the table. Uh, it's going to be, solution is going to be saturated. Good. And, um, but still no precipitation. Good. Great. When the reaction is finished, Q will be equal to K. Good. Remember we said that the solubility is defined as, this is defined as how much you have to add to reach saturation. Mm -hmm. So if you add this amount, we must have saturated the solution, but we've added the amount that's exactly enough to saturate the solution, so there's still no reason for there to be any precipitate. Remember, this is the maximum amount we can dissolve. So we yeah. can dissolve all of it. Uh, and now, how do we know that we're at saturation? Because Q equals the KSP. Remember that K is the furthest that we can go. Well, now we've gone the furthest that we can go. So that's a good row. All right, and finally, let's start from scratch and add an amount of salt that is greater than the salts solubility. I don't know the word for oversaturation. Now, let, let's just think about what, what is the solution going to look like when things have stopped changing? When everything is done, when any reactions are over, how would we describe the solution? I mean, it's definitely going to have precipitation. Yeah, so we know that some of the salt is going to precipitate because we, we can't, it, it, there's too much of it for it all to dissolve. All right, and now how would we describe the solution? Well, um, I would still describe it as saturated. Saturated, okay. That's kind of why there's a precipitate because it was, uh, uh, it's saturated and we've added even more than it would take to saturate it, so that amount precipitates out. And so Q is more than Q. Actually, Q will still equal the KSP. Oh. Now, this is something that, again, is different from equilibrium. When we talked about equilibrium, we said that Q could be less than K, equal to K, or bigger than K. But that doesn't really make sense for dissolution reactions. Remember we said that this tells us the furthest we can go. Well, this is the furthest that we can go, that we can't go, that we can't go beyond it. So it doesn't make sense for Q to be bigger than K. Okay. So what would happen here is, if this did completely dissolve, it's kind of convoluted logic. The logic is kind of convoluted. If all of the salt dissolved, then Q would be bigger than K. Mm -hmm. But it's impossible for Q to be bigger than K for um, a dissolution reaction. Therefore, it can't completely dissolve. Instead, some of it has to precipitate out so that we reach the point where Q equals K. Okay, that's the difference between yeah. Q and KSP and uh, Q and uh, K. That's right. Acid. That's right. So for normal equilibrium, Q could be bigger or smaller than K because Q is where you're at and K is where you're going. But in this case, the KSP is the furthest we can go. Okay. So Q can't go further than that in normal circumstances. Okay, that All right. sense. Now, there are unusual circumstances where you can make the Q be bigger than the KSP, and that would be called a supersaturated solution. But your instructor didn't talk about that in the lecture notes. I don't think that's going to be tested too much okay. in your class, so I don't want to go into that. Um, for the stuff that you're focusing on in your class, you don't need to really worry about supersaturated solutions. That's but an unusual what are, what situation. Are those examples just well, um, if you uh, manipulate the experimental conditions, 
it is possible to temporarily dissolve more salt than you normally could. Is it by increasing temperature? Yeah. So for example, if you, um, if you kind of carefully change the temperature, so let's say that you start with a solution that is saturated, and then I think then, then if you lower the temperature, then you lower the temperature, it becomes super saturated mm -hmm. because the solubility usually, I think, goes down when the temperature goes yeah. down. Um, however, it won't precipitate out unless you give it a little energy. So for example, if you tap the beaker, then it would precipitate out. Yeah. But until you tap the beaker, it'll be in this temporary super saturated okay. situation. But the whole point is that that's a kind of unusual situation that doesn't normally happen. You would have to manipulate things in order to get that to happen. Mm -hmm. So for the normal problems that you're going to see in this introductory course, you can only have unsaturated or saturated okay. solutions. You're not normally going to have a super saturated solution. Um, so these are the three possible cases.